Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the smallest iPhone in the iPhone 12 lineup of devices. We're talking about the brand new iPhone 12 mini. I've had the device for a little over a week and I've been trying to use it and make sense of what this iPhone 12 mini is trying to serve. Who is this for and does it make sense? And of course, I want to share with you guys, obviously, the things that I liked and the things that I did not like, specifically the issues that I had with the iPhone 12 mini. This is TK and this is my review of the brand new iPhone 12 mini. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So the iPhone 12 mini is definitely the smallest iPhone to date. Physically, it's actually smaller than the iPhone SE. This is the iPhone SE 2020 released earlier this year with last year's processor. So this is running the A13 Bionic as opposed to the A14. The difference between the two obviously is also greater than that. It's not just the combination of the processor, but it's also the features, the cameras that we have in here. We have obviously multiple cameras here on this one. Uh, we have obviously some of the new technologies that came in as well as the new design and of course 5G to boot. So the main difference of course is that this is physically the smallest device, although not the smallest display, as the iPhone SE 2020 definitely has a much bigger chin and forehead here, which gives us a smaller display. You can definitely see it's a bigger display on the, S on the mini, but the SE is physically bigger. What you're getting here essentially is a 5.4 inch display that is essentially a very minimalistic experience. So almost all, basically none of the bezels are there. Uh, face ID is present there. You see there, it recognizes the camera. I already have a glass protector installed in here just to make sure I protect the not only the glass on the front, but also the camera optics on the back. And that's why it actually looks a little bit different than most iPhones that you've seen. Uh, we have wireless charging. And of course, we also have wired fast charging. So 20 watt uh, wire charging uh, with the uh, basically not included charger. And the reason why I had the box in here uh, the box itself only carries basically the phone and the wire. So, but the fastest charging that you can get here is up to 20 watts uh, and basically up to 30%, uh, up to 50% in 30 minutes. Uh, we have a 2220 milliampere battery. So a small battery, but again, small form factor. Uh, a 5.4 inch display, 1080p resolution at a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio. And again, it's the 5.4 inch display. The standard model, the 12 and the 12 Pro are carrying a 6.1 inch display. So slightly different. We have four gigs of RAM and uh, basically a capacity and price point that changes depending on what you're looking for. An entry level iPhone mini, iPhone 12 mini, if you get it carrier locked, meaning this is an AT&T, a Verizon or a T-Mobile model, it starts at $699. But for some reason, Apple is charging an additional $30 if I want to buy it unlocked, which is the version that I have here. So this unlocked model sells for $729 at the base model with 64 gigs of internal storage. It goes up to $779 if I want to get 128 gigs of internal storage. If I want to go to $256, it goes to about $879. Conversely, the iPhone 12, which essentially is the standard model of the iPhone models, uh, can go all the way basically from 829 at the 64 gig model all the way to 879, sorry, 979 dollars. So essentially about a hundred dollar premium above the mini. So the mini starts at the cheapest version of an iPhone, which is why I'm making this video. I want to see if this device being the entry level price point to Apple, the Apple's iPhone 12 series uh, makes sense. Should you consider this phone or should you automatically be considering the 829 uh, iPhone 12 standard model with a bigger display, bigger battery? Now, as far as the actual optics that we have here, we have obviously 12 megapixel cameras all around. We have a wide angle lens here, a standard focal length, a dual tone LED flash with a microphone. Uh, the wireless charging that we have here can actually go all the way up to 12 volts with the mag, char with the mag charge, the new mag connections that we have here, the magnetic connectors that we have, which is something that we don't have on earlier versions of uh, basically iPhone. So this is something new, so faster charging, but again, nothing is included in the box. And if you do purchase the actual Mac connector, make sure you purchase the adapter with it because they don't also come in the box. But again, also all of this is above the $730 uh, because of the fact that this is actually not included in the box. Powering this entire beast is the A14 Bionic, an upgraded processor that we get here in 2020. Uh, we have a 5G connectivity here. So now 5G is all across. Uh, and I've been using it with uh, T-Mobile here in the US. Let's go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. And uh, as far as speed tests, I've actually been getting pretty decent speeds depending on where I'm able to get 5G signal. So that's also going to be kind of the thing you want to keep in mind. Although I've been testing it quite a bit, I've been able to basically catch on LTE signals most of the time, considering here it's about 74 down, 56 up. But when I was able to catch 5G connectivity, I was able to get 140 down with 78 up. So pretty decent speeds, pretty comparable uh, experience. Uh, the UI that we have here is the iOS 14.2. It's been updated to that. Obviously, we have the new aggregated folders on the side. We have the new widgets set up. We have the ability of integrating widgets here into the actual system, which is very nice. And all of these things have 
Um, pluses and minuses, we'll talk about those. So this is definitely some of the new things that we get in there. We'll go ahead and play, play this one. I'm going to turn off the audio just to kind of show you guys some of the new tricks. So we'll go turn this off, play. And you can see the new video option here, the ability basically maximizing, minimizing video, having a video play. And of course, putting it in the side here just to kind of work like almost like a podcast. So it works really nice, um, although still no official compatibility with YouTube. So YouTube needs to have a workaround, but officially no integration. I've been using it uh, basically as my daily driver. So Instagram, Twitter, YouTube Studio, HBO Max, music, different things. And of course, the cameras are absolutely fantastic. As I mentioned before, we have a standard focal length and an ultra wide lens here on the back that's capable of recording 4K 60 frames per second, as well as the front facing camera that we have on the front here that's also capable of providing us that 4K 60 frames per second goodness. Uh, photo obviously will come out pretty good. And of course, we have slow motion, we have time lapse, uh, video mode. Uh, we of course have photo portrait mode which will work and you have the ability of customizing the the lighting effect on the images and of course panorama which is typical uh, all of the options that we have in here let's go ahead and jump back in are also all configurable here on the side by default it defaults automatically to hd30 you just have to click it to turn to 4k and then of course 4k 60 frames that's the uh, the wide angle lens if i jump into the wide angle it stays at 4k 60. if i switch over to the front it stays over at 4k 60. Really, really nice. Let's go ahead and do a quick sample of the front facing and the back facing sensors here. We're going to start off with the front facing camera on the brand new iPhone 12 mini. Now, 4K60 is actually capable. Uh, we're able to get 4K60 on all of the lenses that we have here. Uh, one of the main benefit is, of course, is also the color calibration between all the different lenses. Again, the video is going to be produced in 1080p 30 frames per second, just for reference. But the video footage was originally shot in 4K60 on all the lenses on the brand new iPhone 12 mini. So we went ahead and switched over to the primary sensor here on the brand new iPhone 12. We're able to do again 4k 60 frames per second but we're also able to do the one little trick and that's the ability of going to the wide angle lens and still keep the 4k 60 frames per second goodness going that's really nice and again capable of keeping the same color temperature between all three of the lenses on the brand new iphone 12 mini or even iphone 12 that's the, again keep in mind this is just a smaller form factor one of the things that iphones have always excelled in is videos as you saw there there was no question it definitely looks and sounds really good uh, again keeping in mind what you're getting here is just the smallest version of these devices uh, and as far as audio, let's go ahead and play a quick sample. This is NCS Alex Scrindo, a non-copyrighted song, Jumbo. And we're going to definitely be checking out the stereo speakers capability on this little guy. There's no question that you're going to be enjoying content on this when you're listening to the speakers. Now there is no headphone jack and no adapter in the box, so Bluetooth connectivity, or if you want to be able to buy the additional adapter from, uh, from Apple to be able to use your wired connections. Uh, there are also other options on the market that are wired lightning adapters, so you can definitely use those. Uh, the lightning connector on the bottom, just for heads up, is it running at USB 2.0, so just the speed reference here, as well as the fact that it is power delivery supported. So the adapter or the power charger that you're going to use it could be a PD charger and it'll work pretty well and give you full features here. As far as using this device as a daily driver, the battery life on this has been my biggest concern since starting to use it. Um, after the initial couple of days of setting up everything, the battery did get a little bit better. I was able to carry it with me for most of the day and not have to actually charge it, meaning putting on the charger essentially just to charge it. Um, I will say that I got about between five hours, almost four and a half to five hours worth of screen on time between mixed usage. Um, and I also want to mention that I do use this phone in the car for CarPlay. So in my car, I have Apple CarPlay. And whenever I do use that, it does tend to charge the phone a little bit. So I don't necessarily go an entire day without having it at all on a charger, but I did not intentionally try to charge it. And by the end of the day, I ended it roughly about between 10 to 15 percent, which again insinuates that I need to basically put it on the charge. So I would not expect the, you know, this device will not carry you two days. This is pretty much, I would say, um, a good average usage a daily driver from the morning, like around 6 a.m. all the way to about 9 p.m. and about 10, 15 percent left. So that pretty much summarizes the things that I liked about this device. So essentially, those are the things that you should look forward to. It's definitely giving you the entire iPhone experience. Uh, the iphone 12 experience in a smaller form factor obviously we have the dual camera sensors the battery being smaller is a little bit of a concern and we'll talk about that now in some of the things that are kind of my issues and the and the problem that i did have with this unit now if we switch over to the things that concern me about this device i would probably say first and foremost is the battery size i understand that this is a smaller phone and obviously cannot hold a massive battery but a 2200 milliampere battery in this form factor with 5g is something that is concerning me because this device will not last me through the next day. Meaning if I pick it up off the charger by the, I would say 6 a.m. in the morning today, 
I cannot expect that this will last me all the way till 6 a.m. the next morning because on average, I did not get more, but again, about 10% or so at the end of the day. And if it does last till the next morning, it's probably gonna be dead by that point. Now the battery concern could be something that is basically pr pretty much a particular thing to me based on the way I use my device. And again, depending on your lifestyle, and if you're within a reach of a charger most of the time, this is not gonna be an issue. And again, you're able to charge it pretty quickly with a 20 watt charger, separate, sold separately, of course. The issue that I cannot get over at this point is that I have periodic issues with the display where it stops registering my touches. And it happens to me generally in the morning whenever I wake up in the morning and I'm basically, I take it off the charger and I'm trying to log into my phone. And as you can see with the video that I'm showing you right now, I'm trying to put in my pin just to unlock the phone and it has issues and which is something that is not something that I should be expecting um, at any price point, even a premium device like the iPhone 12 mini. Um, you notice right there as I'm touching the display all over, it's not registering every single touch and I'm touching it very uh, firmly. I'm not trying to do like soft touches to kind of simulate it. It should have registered every single one of those taps. And for that reason alone, and of course, since this is something that's also been reported that not I'm not the only iPhone 12 mini user that's recording it, um, it's something that is something that concerns me at the price point that this device is starting. It's an expensive phone. I understand it's a first generation phone and we should expect some issues, but this display issues like these are not something that you want to basically, uh, I would say, commit yourself to, especially at the $750. Again, this is my device was $739, uh, about, basically about $730, a $30 premium because it's an unlocked model. And it still has a problem. And again, if I gone with a higher, you know, more expensive, I want to be able to basically make sure that I'm comfortable with the unit that I'm going to keep. So for that purpose alone, I am going to basically exchange this unit and try to get another unit in, in hopes uh, that that unit doesn't actually give me those issues. But at the end of the day, the iPhone 12 mini is offering us a very unique experience. None of the other iPhones come in this actual form factor. If you look at the 11, the X, the XS, um, the only thing that comes close to is the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8. And even then physically the phone is bigger, although the display on this device is obviously bigger because of the new design that we have. Uh, 5G connectivity works really nice. The display, when it actually is not, does not have any response issues, actually is pretty nice. It's small. It's one of the very few devices I can actually reach all the way to the top. Uh, it does take some getting used to because of the fact that everything is much smaller. And of course, you, uh, although it's a big display, it's not exactly the same size as like a you know a six inch or 6.5 inch display. If you're used to the iPhone 11, uh, like an example would be here. This is the 11 Pro Max. This is a massive phone when it comes next to it. So if you're coming from a big iPhone 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, you definitely have some adjustments to do. But once you get over that, the fact that it's so small that even when you put a case on it, it does not bulk up. It's definitely a nice form factor. Um, is this device for everybody? Uh, I probably would say that if you've always had an issue with iPhones being too big, like say the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 was just basically too big of a display, I think the iPhone 12 mini will definitely work for you. You get all of the benefits of the iPhone 12 with just a smaller form factor. So you do need to understand that the battery life is not going to be as good as the iPhone 12. But again, you're kind of, uh, I would say, kind of like compromising one thing for the other. You want the small size and you want the features, but you don't want the big bulky uh, you know, display and device and all of that stuff. So I think the iPhone 12 mini is definitely going to fit a lot of people's needs. Now, do I recommend it at the price point that it's coming in? It's definitely interesting. If we look at iPhones in, let's say, 2019, when the iPhone 11 um, was selling for $699, that's the base model of the iPhones. And now the iPhone 12 mini is the actual default or de facto smallest iPhone that we have. Uh, even though it's not the standard model, it's the mini model, that starts at $699 if you have it as a locked model with a carrier. If you get the unlocked model like I did, it's $730. That's an additional $30 premium to get an unlocked model, which is also a very unique experience. Apple's doing very different things this year. Uh, they took out the charger from the box because they said they wanted to be more uh, basically eco-friendly, but then they're selling you a full charger in a separate box for an additional cost. Um, no headphone jacks. The adapter is also an additional uh, charge. If you want to get the MagSafe connector, you need to buy that and the charger because they don't come together. So that's two separate charges. So at the end of the day, what I would probably say is if you can get over the pricing and the, uh, I would say the piecemeal purchasing process, which now even an iPhone 12 mini that starts at $699 will get you pretty close to almost 800 bucks once you start adding all the additional things that you want because we're talking about tax, we're talking about a charger in the box, and we're also talking about the MagSafe. And if you want to pick up that three and a half millimeter headphone jack, that's an extra 10 to 15 bucks. So you can get yourself pretty much up there in the price on the base model. But again, 
I'll, I'll digress. Those are some of the things I'm concerned about is just basically how every year prices just keep going up and up, even though we're getting a smaller phone. So again, pick up whatever you feel like is more comfortable for you. I think the 12 mini has a lot to offer, even with the shortcomings that I'm dealing with. That's probably more of a first gen, maybe it could be a bad batch that was done at the factory. And I'm pretty sure if I'm replacing it, I should be able to basically get a new unit. And hopefully that issue does basically end up being a non, a non issue for me. Let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think of the brand new iPhone 12 mini? For me, I feel like this device has a lot to offer, but again, keep in mind the little bit of shortcoming with the first generation device, and hopefully you're able to pick up a unit that does not have any problems. Um, for me, as far as physical sizes, I still think that the iPhone 12 Pro Max or the 11 Pro Max is a really good device. If you're thinking of upgrading from an iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12 series, if the physical size is not a concern, meaning the 11 or the 12 is basically where you would have gone anyways, I don't feel like that upgrade is really justified at this time. I think that for the most part, I would pretty much see that somebody that had the iPhone X or the XS, those are the people that are probably want to look into upgrading to the iPhone 12 uh, series with the exception of the mini. The mini is a very unique on its own device, which is a new phone to start with. It's a first generation mini from Apple. And of course, uh, just keep in mind, it is also very different than what you normally get with the SC 2020. There's a lot of differences between the two. The SC 2020 starts about 400 bucks. The mini starts about 700 bucks. The $300 uh, difference, you get a lot more and I still think it's worth it. But again, you have an option if you want to start with the iPhone SE 2020. This is TK. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Like and subscribe as usual. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one.